Coming up tonight on YCN News, U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders takes his new presidential campaign to the Granite State. Newbury, New Hampshire residents will need a permit for all fireworks and a plan to open the New Hampshire State House on the weekends receives a green light from a key Senate committee. For more news, weather and sports, it's time for YCN News, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, Southern Vermont, and Windsor County. News, sports, weather, and all that is happening in our area. The news on YCN, your local view. Good evening. It's Wednesday, May 27th. I'm Laura James. Welcome to YCN News. Well, one day after launching in Burlington, Vermont, his bid to be elected president in 2016, U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders headed east to New Hampshire today, laying out a framework for his candidacy. YCN's John O'Connor brings us this story. Senator Bernie Sanders announced his campaign for presidency yesterday in Burlington, Vermont, and today he wasted no time hitting the campaign trail. He stumped in Concord, New Hampshire at NEC's Concord location. The room was jam-packed and hot. Senator Sanders started his conversation at New England College Concord campus, focusing on the need to have educational reform, especially the high cost of college. I have introduced legislation, and as president, I will make this legislation into law which says that every public college and public university in this country will be tuition free. Yes! He focused on student debt, had students talk about the debt issues they had. I'm, I'm about like t around 10,000 in debt, just about like the, the same as Sean. And with that 6% interest rate, it's going to be crazy. And I'm, I just finished my sophomore year, so. Senator Sanders continued his discussion focusing on the economy, going back to familiar themes of his campaigns in the past. 99% of all new income created in America goes to the top 1%. Got that? Top 1%. He focused on how such so few people in America have so much wealth. We are the only major nation on earth that does not guarantee health care to all people as a right. Senator Sanders also focused on climate change. He said that's one of the major issues confronting the world and confronting the United States. We have got to transform our energy system away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energy. Senator Sanders also laid out a plan to increase taxes on the wealthiest billions. He called them the billionaire class where 45 million people are living in poverty, where we have a political system heavily dominated by a handful of billionaire families. That's where we are. Senator Sanders focused on a fair tax. He didn't define what fair is, but he said that we need to have a fair tax on, these, on the billionaire class and on these large corporations that have their income overseas. We are not going to give up. We love this country too much to say that the billionaire class can have it all. In the questions from the audience, one of the questions asked, Why can't we ask Hillary to give up her spot and give it to you? <laughs> I could be wrong, but I suspect she would disagree with you. I, I could be wrong on that. All right, but here's the story. But he did challenge her to focus and to address issues and to take stands on key issues. As I talked to people afterwards, some of the subtext was that Hillary Clinton's campaign seems to be very scripted, and they juxtaposed that with Bernie Sanders, who took unscripted questions from the audience uh, during his stop in Concord, New Hampshire. I'm John O'Connor for YCN News, reporting from Concord, New Hampshire. Okay, John, thanks so much. Follow Wazia News for continued campaign 2016 coverage. Well, turning to local news now, the Newbury, New Hampshire Fire Department reminds town residents and guests of a fireworks ordinance in place. The goal of the ordinance is to resolve instances of unpermitted and illegal firework displays in town. Although firework purchases are legal in New Hampshire, such purchases are only allowed from approved and state licensed retailers. Newberry residents, per the fire department's website, can help firefighters make the ordinance stick. Now, if you see or hear fireworks in your neighborhood, check the website to see if a fireworks permit has been issued. If there is no permit listed, fill out the online reporting form 
The form goes directly to the Newberry Fire Department and will be investigated. This form is for reporting after the fact and is not to be used for emergency reporting. Should the fireworks pose an immediate safety or fire hazard, just call 911 and Newberry Fire or Police will respond to the emergency. The website is shown on the screen below. Well, it's still in the planning stages, yet New Hampshire residents and visitors next summer may be able to visit the State House. Now tours of the State House are given when the building is open to visit from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. But a State Senate committee is giving a thumbs up to opening in summer 2016 the State House for public tours, that according to the Associated Press on the weekends. This is approved. It will be the Greater Concord Chamber of Commerce that oversees a program resulting in State House tours every Saturday between Memorial Day and Columbus Day. Coming up on YCN News, Vermont State Police report on holiday traffic enforcement. A look at the 25th anniversary of Vermont's Open Studio Weekend and Springfield Softball played a doubleheader. Mike Bazone will have the results, plus a look at the community calendar, local sports scores, and our midweek forecast, too, when YCN News returns. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Laura James. The summer holiday travel season is upon us, and unfortunately, the Memorial Day traffic in Vermont was not without its fatalities. Three people died on Vermont roadways over May 23rd to May 24th. To date, police say 14 people have been killed in auto crashes. In 42 percent of this year's fatal accidents, the drivers or passengers were either not wearing seatbelts or not properly restrained in the car. Police remind all motorists, including passengers, to please buckle up. Well, this past Saturday and Sunday marked the 25th anniversary of Vermont's Open Studio Weekend. Artists and craftsmen throughout the state invited visitors to see where and how they do artwork. Every studio destination differs from another, and the self-guided tours introduce visitors to a range of art mediums and the state's geography as well. Glass artist Christopher Sherman demonstrated from his studio at 33 Bridge Street in Bellows Falls his creative skills. YCN's Dan Carbonara explains. Chris Sherwin and we're here at uh, Sherwin Art Glass Studio, 33 Bridge Street in Bellows Falls, Vermont. Sherwin Art Glass specifically has, has been in this building since uh, summer of 2005, so this is about my 10th year, uh, plus or minus a few months. I had 12 years of glass blowing history prior to that. I started at Simon Pierce in Windsor, Vermont doing production crystal for four years and I got a lot of my fundamentals from that. So the work you pretty much see around my studio has, it's a culmination of the 12 years of working for the two different studios, but it's really a West Coast style that nobody else is doing in New England, so it works well. I guess what Sherwin Art Glass represents is nature's beauty in glass. That's kind of how I, in a concise way, say what I do. Most of what I do has an element of nature to it, and since I moved home uh, to New England, I try to specialize in New England-inspired nature. It's uh, the 25th anniversary of the Vermont Craft Council's Open Studio Weekend. Uh, statewide, there's about 200 artists all across Vermont. We're opening our studios and our doors to the public and uh, inviting everybody to come out and see what we do. In my studio, uh, you can expect to see a lot of glass. Uh, I've been working in glass for about 20 plus years professionally. It's 2130 degrees. It's very molten. It's like warm honey. Um, it's cooling immediately as I pull it out of the furnace. And the, the trick that comes with experience in working with glass is what can you do to the glass at any given time. As it cools, um, the viscosity changes. Uh, you are able to shape it more or less as it cools. Every petal, every leaf is a single application of glass. And then if it looks like it's floating in glass, I've immerse the whole thing in clear glass and encase the decoration. Everything is on the surface as I do it. A, a big question I get is, how did you get that in the middle? And if, if you think of paperweight specifically in reverse, the inside is done first, and then the shaping, the actual creating a round paperweight, is the last thing that I do. So it's a buildup of layers. Um, it's painting with glass, a lot of color, a lot of layering. I think of myself more as an artisan or a craftsperson. I'm intrigued by process. I like the process of taking molten glass and making something out of it. Getting an idea, often it's from somebody, or maybe it's a picture I saw or the cardinal in my bird feeder, 
and say, I wonder if I can make that out of glass. And so, and the intriguing and fun and inspirational part is making a blob of molten glass become the cardinal. The easiest way to get here is to follow uh, signs or directions to Bellows Falls. When you're in the center of town, you take either a left or a right toward New Hampshire and you'd run right into my building. It's just past the post office. It's a long brick and window building. Now it looks great if you missed this past weekend's Vermont Open Studio event. Fear not, there will be a fall open studio October 3rd and 4th of this year. The website where you can find more information is shown below. Also in Vermont State News, police report several burglaries at two cemeteries in Cavendish. The thefts of gasoline cans and a John Deere riding mower were taken from the Cavendish Village and Hillcrest Cemeteries. The thefts occurred between Saturday night, May 23rd, and Monday night, May 25th. Police are asking for the public's help. If you have information on this incident or saw anything suspicious to add either location, call the state police or Cavendish Town Office. Contact information is shown below. Coming up on YCN News, Kearsarge Chronicles' Lynn Solomon spoke with Debbie Stanley. She's the executive director of Osborne Sargent Land Trust. We'll have that conversation when YCN News returns. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Mike Pizzone. It may not be official on the calendar just yet, but it's sure starting to feel more and more like summer with all that humidity. We may be in for some relief this evening though, with a 60% chance of heavy rain and thunderstorms before 9pm. Storms can be severe at times, bringing wind gusts of up to 25 miles per hour, with temperatures falling to about 65 degrees. Things won't be as warm out there tomorrow, with temperatures struggling to break the 80 degree mark, but there's a slight chance we could see some more rain and storms throughout the afternoon. Tomorrow night will feel much more comfortable with partly cloudy skies and a low of 56 before another bright sunny day Friday with a high of 80 during the day and low of 58 Friday evening. Now let's take a look at our community calendar to see what's happening in the region. The Claremont Parks and Recreation Department will host a movie night in the park event Friday at dusk at Monadnock Park in Claremont, New Hampshire. This week's movie will be Big Hero 6. The Bellows Falls Farmer's Market will be held Friday from 4 to 7 p.m. on Canal Street in Bellows Falls, Vermont. The market will be held rain or shine and include live music and story time for kids. A bingo night sponsored by PFI will be held Friday evening at KJ's Place on River Street in Springfield, Vermont. Doors open at 5 p.m. with games beginning at 6.30. Cost is $15 per package. You can call it a sign of respect. But for the Springfield softball team, it can sometimes be a double-edged sword. Thanks largely in part to the team's recent success, including a state championship in 2011, the Division II Cosmos were dealt a difficult schedule this season with six games against Division I opponents. And while coach Andy Bladika's team has come out on the winning end in the majority of those contests, yesterday's doubleheader against the defending D1 champs in Mount Anthony was a different story. The Patriots swung their way to a 6-0 lead in Game 1 by the start of the third inning, and added runs in each of the next four frames to clinch an early victory by way of Vermont's 15-run mercy rule. Cassidy Otis held her own from the circle despite suffering the loss, giving some much-needed rest to ace pitcher Jay Twombly, who's thrown the majority of the innings for the Cosmos this season. Offensively, hits were hard to come by for the home team, though second baseman Karina Nichols did swing her way on base in the third inning, before third baseman Chelsea McAllister added this base hit in the fourth inning. Things weren't all bad for the Cosmos though, as the team played stellar defense at times, and even turned to double play. And though Springfield did make things more interesting in the nightcap, the team still came out on the short end of a 7-3 decision. The Cosmos are now 9-5 on the season, with two regular season games left against Leland and Gray tomorrow and Mill River on Saturday. The Windsor baseball team scored five runs over the game's final two innings yesterday to help turn a back and forth contest into a narrow win. Connor Gould led the Yellow Jackets from the plate with three RBI, while Nick Kapazinski earned the win from the mound with five strikeouts over six innings. Kyle White and Ed Shambu played well for Springfield, as each drove in a pair of runs. Windsor improved to 4-10 and ten with the win, and the Cosmos are now 9-6. and six. The Bells Falls softball team celebrated its senior game in style yesterday, tallying 16 hits on its way to a one-sided win over Byrne Burton. Chelsea Wilder led the Terriers with three RBI, while Ali Bashaw and Alana Shaw each drove in a pair. 
Murphy Hicks earned the win from the circle, allowing just four hits in a complete game effort. Bells Falls is now 12-3 and, and will cap off its regular season schedule tomorrow at Burn Burton. The second-ranked Lebanon boys tennis team made quick work of seven-seeded St. Thomas yesterday, winning everything but the final two doubles matches to advance to the semifinals of the Division II tournament. Max Reed, Taryn Campbell, Jacob Perez, Noah Dadabani, and Noah Ryder all tallied wins for the Raiders, who will take on third-ranked Oyster River tomorrow at 4 p.m. That does it for YCN Sports. I'm Mike Pizzone. Thanks so much, Mike. Coming up tomorrow, we'll have the results of a matchup between Stevens and Fall Mountain. Now on the way, YCN's Capital Connections' John O'Connor sat down in the studio with Ray Gagnon. He's District 5 rep for Sullivan County. Part 2 of that conversation is coming up when YCN News continues. The YCN News continues in a moment.